All right, welcome back to Dirty Dave's Garage. Today we got a 2015 Chevy Equinox. Gonna be doing an oil change. Um, got our mobile one, synthetic 530 uh, weight oil. Got a Fram Tough Guard oil filter, part number TG9018. If I think of it, I'll try to put these links down in the description so you can get them more, get them off Amazon. Uh, this is the four-cylinder Ecotec engine. Um, before we get the truck up on the lift, we're going to loosen the oil cap. Well, so air gets in there, so the oil drains out faster. I've got the car warmed up. It's not real hot. It's winter time here, so it's cold out, but I'm going to get it up while the engine's still warm and run all the dirty oil out. As usual, I ran a half quart of sea foam in it, put it in a couple days ago, and have been running it to flush the motor out. I poured the sea foam right in here, and I put the other half of the bottle in the gas tank to clean out the fuel injection system. So we're going to get this up in the air, get her, show you how to drain it, and uh, get on with it. Hang tight. All right, welcome back to Dirty Dave's Garage. Today we got a 2015 Chevy Equinox. Going to be doing an oil change. Um, got our mobile one synthetic 530 uh, weight oil. Got a Fram Tough Guard oil filter, part number TG9018. If I think of it, I'll try to put these links down in the description so you can get them, more, get them off Amazon. Uh, this is the four-cylinder Ecotec engine. Um, before we get the truck up on the lift, we're going to loosen the oil cap. Well, so air gets in there, so the oil drains out faster. I've got the car warmed up. It's not real hot. It's winter time here, so it's cold out, but I'm going to get it up while the engine's still warm and run all the dirty oil out. As usual, I ran a half quart of sea foam in it, put it in a couple days ago, and have been running it to flush the motor out. I poured the sea foam right in here, and I put the other half of the bottle in the gas tank to clean out the fuel injection system. So we're going to get this up in the air, get her, show you how to drain it, and uh, get on with it. Hang tight. All right, so we're up in the air. You're going to need a 15 millimeter ratchet or wrench or socket, whatever you got handy. Here's your oil pan right here. Back up so you can get a picture where it is, actually. And while you're under here, it's always a good idea to look around, see if, any, if you have any uh, parts that need lubing or addressing. Check your wheels, make sure they're not loose. You know, for wobble, make sure your ball joints are good. This car doesn't have many miles on it, so I'm sure they're fine. But I'm going to go ahead. I've already cracked this loose. Start getting the, once you get it where you can hand loosen it. Have your catch pan ready underneath. Just start working out the screw, the bolt, the plug, whatever you want to call it. And about to come out. Here she goes. Make sure you wipe the end of your plug off real good. Sometimes they're magnetized and they might have particles on the end. So make sure you clean your bolt real good. Once she's done draining, we'll come back and uh, take it from there. All right, oil's pretty much done draining. Got a little tiny trickle coming out. Not enough to be worried about. Got our plug cleaned off. Wiped down real good, nice and clean. We're gonna go ahead and put that back in. Make sure when you put your bolt in, you don't force it, you know, jiggle it around. Make sure it's threading in nice and smooth. You shouldn't have any resistance. Get it snugged up and get your wrench. Make sure you snug it up good. Doesn't have to be crazy tight. It's got like a rubber seal on it, so just good and firm and you're good to go. And we're going to get the um, car down, I'm going to wipe that off, and we're going to show you where the filter goes. Okay, getting through the oil filter might be a little tricky. It's down here, you pan back, and you see the engine, I got the light shining on it. It's down in here, where my hand is, which you probably can't see, but you see the little cap. 
You need a 32 mil, I'm using a 32 mil socket. I'm gonna loosen that, I'm sure it's not tight, it's just a cap. This is one of those cartridge filters, not like a regular oil filter. So I'm gonna get that loose and get it out of the way and then we'll show you what we got. All right, this one was tricky. Uh, you can see I had to use my three quarter drive with a couple extensions and a wobble knuckle on the end and then my 32 millimeter socket. I was able to get it down there. I went in, if you can see, I'm trying not to blind you with, on this side down and onto the cap. And it took a little finagling, but I got it loose. I'm just wondering how many times when you take it to Jiffy Lube or to the dealership, they actually change your filter when you get an oil change. That's why I do everything myself that I can because I know it's getting done. And a lot of times when they've got a pain in the ass like this to deal with, they'll just skip it. Because you don't have to replace the filter every time, but you're paying for it, so you, you should get a new filter. So once you get it loose, you just pull this cap out. The filter will be attached to it, snake it out. And you'll see it's just one of those paper cartridge filters. Hold it down here, it's pretty dirty. Probably haven't been changed in a while. So I'm gonna get the new one. Basically, uh, when you buy a new one of these, it comes with a new O-ring, and I'm gonna show you that in a second. And you just pop it into the top and put it back in. It'll have a new seal for around the edge here, around the lip. You'll see there's like a rubber, rubber O-ring. It's probably hard to see here, but that's an actual O-ring that'll come off. I'll use a pick tool, pull that off, put the new one on, and then put the new cartridge in. And uh, well, actually, I can show you that right now over here. I'll just pull it out of the box and you'll see well ah, easier said than done I'm trying to do this one-handed I am my own cameraman today this is the new one it comes with a new orange o-ring to put on the cap and your new filter which just this is just gonna plug into the cap uh, just so if you see this one it's just going to plug straight into the cap and it snaps in there on these little tabs. You'll see. It'll just pop the old one out. We'll get this old O-ring off, put the new one on, put the new cartridge in and get it back in there. So hang tight. All right, so we got our new O-ring on. You see the new one's orange. Then we're going to take our new filter and just pop it in the cap. It should snap on there. It's spring loaded. There it goes, that side's in. There we go. She snapped in. Now we just got to finagle it down. And may, again, just be careful putting it in the hole. Make sure you don't cross thread anything. I'm going to drop it down in there and switch hands. There we go. When she's in there, just start gently spinning it. Make sure it's threading, and it is. Spin it all the way down, get it hand tight. Really doesn't need to be much more than hand tight, but we're gonna stick that assembly I put together, and I'm just gonna snug it up. That's all we're gonna do, just give it a little tweak, maybe just like an eighth of a turn, if that, and uh, just make sure it's good and snug on there. Then we'll start putting our oil in. The oil's gonna go right up here, where we loosened the cap earlier to let air in. Right here so, and it's the 530 synthetic that we're using be right back all right so we've got a clean funnel in the hole we're going to carefully pour our oil in this is the, the book says the, the owner's manual says it takes five quarts I got a five quart jug we're gonna put about four and a half quarts in maybe four and three quarters. Just leave a little bit and then we'll check it. We don't want to overfill it. And then if it gets low, we'll check it in a few days if it <clears throat> needs topping off. We got a little left to top it off with. a minute to run down into the engine block and our uh, dipstick you can see it is down here it's kind of dark get my light down 
This is the dipstick. It's got the yellow handle. We'll pull that out. Wipe it off. Make sure you got a clean rag handy. Or semi-clean. Pull your dipstick out. You'll see it's got like a scored section on the bottom of it. You just want oil to the top of the scored section. And I may not be able to show you on here, but we'll try. I don't know if it'll focus or not. We'll stick it back in the tube. See what we got. Alright. So it looks like it's on the full. All the way, I don't know if you can see it or not. It might be too much light. And we're going to check it again. Wipe it off again. Check it one more time. Push it all the way in. Bring it all the way out. And again, I think, I think we're good. But like I said, I put about four and three quarter quarts in. We'll run it for a couple days and we'll check it. It'll probably need topping off. But uh, I think we're good to go. Always make sure the last thing you do, I always stuff a paper towel in my funnels so they don't drip all over the place when you take them out. <clears throat> but last thing you always want to do in an oil change is make sure to put your cap back on. Make sure it's tight. You're good to go. You're done. Your oil's changed. Remember to check it again in a couple days and uh, make sure you're still on the full mark and should check your, check your oil every other tank full if, just to be on the safe side. Gets, gets a half quart low, pour a little more in. Until next time, we'll see you. It's been good having you. This is Dirty Dave's Garage. See you next time.